and shit, you're going to sell your stuff at the same rate that everyone else does. You'll make your money in that. And the cost, instead of someone getting fat cat off the idea, they agree that in order to do this job as CEO or assistant or whatever, I, the job is only worth this much to the people, but on paper, I'm going to, we're going to write down, you got 150 when really you're doing it for 50. So the extra hundred thousand for just the CEO would go against the cost of the year's profits for lowering the price of the food. If the assistant gets 80,000, same deal. Right. He does fucking he lives on 50. He puts 30 against that's one hundred and thirty thousand against the cost of the food. If the whole board does that, but it's on paper, they're getting paid this. But underneath the table and with just the council, they agree that this is what they do. Then we're able to sell this stuff on uh, basically half of it goes to rich people and make our money off that. The other half goes to the poor people. Who we're not interested in making money at all, but getting as much access to cheap, healthy food as we can. That's going to be a hard sell. Well, I mean, aren't you, aren't you taking the biggest hit, so to speak? Yeah, more or less, pretty much. So, I, I, yeah, I mean, willing to do that. Yeah. It's, it's the whole. Thing. I mean, I think the the main thing is. It's a hard sell if it's not sustainable, if you're just going to be losing money doing it. But I, it sounds like as long as you keep it within a certain mathematical equation, it should work out well. Yeah. Well, these, these vertical farms, especially the aeroponics, if you do the things right and they're fully automated and you follow the system and they're all set up, the numbers line up because they're already existing. Greenhouse all over the world are doing this tech and it's, it's, it's worth it. It's, it's a little expensive as a startup because you're buying a fully automated system setting up the warehouse. You provide, so what like Ma, uh, Mar, uh, <clears throat> Rob and I talked about was, was uh, um, a business having a plan A and a plan B when it comes to the, the what you would be presenting, right? The plan A is basically like within the existing framework just to get the business started just to get Songhees on board, get the land set aside, get the building set up, get the system set up inside, Songhees would be willing to do that, which I am currently able to say to you, I'm about 90% confident in the exact reality because of the buzz that I'm creating with just keeping it simple. And people are like my ideas and they're helping me network and things, right? So there's that possibility. So, uh, Basically, it's, I've been looking into some of the companies out there. There's a couple of good ones in the States, a couple of good ones in Canada. And I'm looking at some alternatives because, you know, some things I'd like to see. I'd, I want to do a tour of that Earthship that's out near Duncan, that Earthship project is out near Ladysmith or whatever it is. I haven't been out there yet. The Eco Village? I think, yeah, the Eco Village. Yeah. Our Eco Village? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't been there yet. Okay. Yeah, they'd be... Uh... <laughs> they got a whole bunch of uh, greenhouses, and they certainly grow. I would so I see. I want to go to Erosia greenhouses because they have a really good setup in there. They're the ones who do those GMO bees and the black aphids. Black aphids keep green aphids away from your plants, <clears throat> and you get these little packets every third bush or some has these little packets of eggs for black aphids. <clears throat> they do their thing. They day off, and in a couple months, you put new seed packets on. The, the the egg packets and it's it's basically a single cycle same with the beehive i think it's about two months three months you switch it out with another beehive and uh, they do their thing and they pollinate all your plants so you don't have to pay someone to hand pollinate if you've ever imagined how much work pollinating a greenhouse full of vegetables would be by hand that's what was used to be done and that's why vegetables were so fucking expensive for no other reason than pollinating. Because you have to pay someone to pollinate every single flower on every single plant of everything in the greenhouse. It's not a fucking fun thing. And then someone discovered those bees. They use them. They do their job. They bring pollen to flowers way fast and efficiently. They do their life cycle and they're done. You know, the queen only spits out like two or three months worth of eggs and her life cycle's done. You know, and so a lot of greenhouses employ these tech, uh, these science because it works. I have no problem with it. It's whatever gets the job done, you know, maximum yield, maximum profit, you know, profit would be offset to 
lower the cost of the food. That's what I'm suggesting. That you're doing this more of, a, a, what would you call it? Uh, beneficence of your, you know, your desire to help. Your altruism has to oh. be dedicated and high, but also re realistic and be a realist also. And the two of those are hard to come to bring together. You know what I mean? Well, how, uh, like, let's say, what do you, do you have any idea about unit cost? Like, is it going to cost like 200000 to set up or? So my cost projections just spitballing and ballparking based on what I, I kind of estimated was irrespective of the land and the building, the systems and the uh, appropriate experts and contracts would be around two and a half million. And that's a fully set up system, ready to go six to nine months from fucking, you know, blah, blah, blah. So they built, Songhees provides the land, Songhees provides the building. The company provides the technology, I buy off them, I am the company. And so I work with the Songhees using this technology, but I don't work for the technology. The technology is utilized to get my job done. Do you see what I'm saying? I don't yeah. want to fucking end up in some partnership with some company and I get the shit <clears throat> stick and they're taking all the money and being greedy about it when that wasn't the fucking you know what i'm saying so really i just want to buy a system the experts teach us how to use it they fuck off and we teach ourselves to continue to to run it you got any problems you call your 1-800 number or whatever you know so how, how much how much at the end of the day from that two and a half million how much would you make personally nothing off the initial investment Nothing. Nothing. My whole thing is I'm literally going to be looking at myself, trying to keep myself afloat for the first two to three years. That's when I can start looking at taking a wage for what I'm doing. When it's it's already enough to build another greenhouse. Once that thing, go, once the momentum is going, then I can sit back and go, now we can do that. Boy, are you, but you're getting a wage. Yeah, but not it not it would be on paper. It would be a very minimal wage. It would be enough to get me through. I'm happy on twenty grand a year for fuck's sake. So give me thirty. Know, give me 40 can I that. just suggest something? I mean, it's it's like uh, like I would suggest a hundred grand a year minimum. What if in the, the certain condition? What if I can't get a big warehouse? What if I only get a small one? And what if the yield off that small vertical garden was around 350,000 a year? That's the, that's that's about four cycles in a year at around 80,000 per cycle, give or take, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's its yield in a year. So it's like uh, eight if years. I, if I sell everything to the grocery stores, that's those models. Those are the ones where you take your organic lettuce and sell it to the fancy grocery stores. But that's not what I'd be completely doing. Because then if I do that, then how the hell am I providing cheap food for people? How am I feeding kids? I'm not. I'm making profit off making food. Anyone can do that. And everyone will be. It's, it's one of the fastest growing industries, period. And there's a lot of investment from the big food companies in this shit now. But isn't the main, one of the main cells is you want to help the reserves become self-sufficient in food production. Yes. So that to me, like, let's just say, for a second here that the uh economy something happened the economy breaks down all of a sudden the world's fucked the big cities are starving to death shit like that right mm -hmm. let's just say something like that happens in five or ten years what you're doing could actually like feed the people yeah so i, I just meant from more than a money point of view i think it's you know that's that's what i said to you about the business that 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 realistic slash altruism Realism is I have to make money to keep the business going and to pay back my investors and things to pay back the people who hold whatever interest in the company. They have to make money too, but it can't be the pro the, the focus can't be on profits, but on being taken care of the bottom line excess, because here's the trick. I want to be able to provide food for the reserves, not money, because if I give a reserve a bunch of money, they're just going to buy a whole bunch of shitty food. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm. Or none at all and blow it on other things. But if what I'm doing is I build a grocery store and a warehouse, a couple of these warehouses on the reserve, and I'm shipping food back and forth. But this grocery store has food that is extremely affordable. 
because our profit structure, instead of self-interest, was people interested. That as long as I got a base salary of 50 G a year, I would give the rest to lower the cost so that in the grocery store, those native kids and those native families could afford the actual food in the grocery store. You know, have you ever been down to your last 10 bucks and you haven't eaten in fucking two days? You know what I'm saying? And you go in a grocery store and you just want to cry. You can't fucking get nothing. I got 10 bucks. What the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's frustrating when you have no money. Mm -hmm. So what if you could? What if your 10 bucks were the average head of lettuce was 25 cents? Bread was 15 cents, so on and so forth. But let me ask you something. So this money is coming. Isn't the money coming from a, an actual native fund that the government is sort of? Initially, yeah, it's from the the, and the Canadian government's put aside money for what's called the Aboriginal Entrepreneurship Fund. But then there's also investors from the university. There's private investors, the Aboriginal Business Development Bank of Canada, the Aboriginal Business Development Bank of BC, Songhees uh, Economic Foundation. Like these are private funding sources. You can also get grants and bursaries from. That's irrespective of bank loans or investors. And okay. so I'm going to be trying to get as many of those fucking things as I can. Then when I have something up and running, if I want to expand quicker than I had planned, that's when I would ask for investment or something. I want to do this largely without any fucking having to pay anyone back. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so if I can play my cards right, then I label this right. And I actually do what I'm saying, which is to actually provide food, not money. You got to understand that the money is not for, I don't mind making a buck, but I don't want to give a check to the reserve the greenhouse is in because I know it will happen. We're selling organic lettuce to hippies and rich people, but the money would go to buy more shitty food or drugs or any number of shit and worsen. You don't give poor people money. Hobima is a perfect example of that. When they got their oil money, did you see what happened to Hobima and shit? Holy, look it up on the computer, but holy fuck. It went to shit. Drug dealers started moving into the reserve and all around the town because then people didn't have to go to Edmonton anymore. They just went to Wetasco and to buy cocaine and shit and fucking jib and heroin and booze people. And the fucking the Wetasco and Auto Mile was selling out cars every single day. And three months later, you'd find them trashed in the hill somewhere in the back road or fucking, you know what I'm saying? The gang violence, the everything it was fucked. And then all of a sudden they were broke. And now it's just like every other reserve, only there's a bunch of old, brand new, shitty cars in the yard that are all trash. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't give impoverished people lots of money or you fucking make it worse. Which, you, you know, you have to teach them to start with food. Food's the foundation, not money. So you have to understand that people involved in the project have to understand at the core. Yes, I believe that the people will approve a $50,000 minimum for James doing what I do. That will take care of me, dude. That's twice as much as I'm ever used to making. I'm happy with that. I got a good life. Dude. Look at my house. Look at my woman. Look at my life. I'm happy. But if I know that instead of becoming a big wig, living this and that, I took that money and I put it to make food cheap for kids and moms and single dads and shit can afford feeding their kids healthy food. I know they'll start to choose the healthy food over the pop tarts and shit. But when all, when I don't know if you've been to a grocery store, but when you're poor, that's what you can afford: yeah. pop tarts and fucking pizza pops and itchy bag noodles and craft dinner, and that's it. You know all the shit food, and that's why obesity, like what, what what's his name said, obesity is the number one reason why we're whole, so high in, in in diabetes, so high in heart this and and this and strokes and everything obesity plus diabetes you're dead obesity plus heart problems you're dead you know and that we talked about that the other day my girl suggested what if also in that grocery store that's selling the food we grow there's also a cafe slash restaurant thing that does supply healthy alternatives for cheap like ready-made meals yeah, or things it, like that it mimics those things yeah <laughs> that look like what they're used to, but is actually a healthy food inside. Right. Have you thought of, uh, I guess, having a restaurant there that is uh, making meals with all this food too? That's like, what she's saying, yeah. That's what, what she said. said. Yeah. So this is all stuff that I could expand two or three years from now. I can expand and tighten the game up a little better. 
But in those first years, you have to prove numbers. That's all I can focus on is proving to the investors and to the Songhees Business Development Corp that I did what I said I was going to do. And, and once you do that, then if you follow the business model, there's enough saved up within two to three years to open up another self-funded greenhouse on another reserve. So now all you have to do is show them your template of here's the money, here's all the figures for three years, you'll get the same thing. And you don't have to take out a loan, we'll build it for you. That's the business model. We build you the fucking, egg. we'll start putting money aside just to build this thing for it. another reserve. Two of those doing the same business model are going to build three just like that. And if it took fucking two, you know, two greenhouses a year to get three, then three is going to take six months to get four. Do you see what I'm saying? And pretty soon they're happening everywhere. We're focusing up north, focusing on the Yukon, Northwest Territories, Nanavut, trying to get to lower their food costs up there to be able to get reliable shipping from these different greenhouses to ship the goods back and forth is going to create a business opportunity for a logistics company, especially one that's based on eco-friendly, sustainable transport, like uh, those electric semis and things, electric delivery trucks and stuff. And if those greenhouses are also on energy uh, initiatives, then they're also following into sustainable energy and things like wind and, and solar and this and that, then if, you see what I'm saying? The next stage, when I told you about following the Maslow's pyramid of needs kind of thing, even though it's all fucked up and we know that, just on the structure of food and water. So now we start thinking about desalination on places like BC and Vancouver Island, Haida Gwaii and places, we can start building self, we can build our own little um, desalination domes, like what the Saudis have just come up with recently. I don't know if you've noticed that. They build domes in the desert that pump seawater in. The, the dome is not a dome, it's actually a sphere, but the top part of the sphere is above the ground and in the sun, see-through glass, it evaporates the seawater. That seawater collects on the dome and is collected in a ring at the bottom. Mm. Well, that condensation is saline-free and can be treated after that. So we can do the same kind of things on reserves all over here, pumping in seawater, creating water. That water can go into our greenhouses to lower the cost and they're necessary for us to even be tied in to the main infrastructure of any city or town. We can be independent on our own territory, providing our own energy, our own water and our own fucking food. Well, doesn't that sound like independence and sovereignty to fucking you? And you start at the very bottom, just do one thing, just get one motherfucking thing working, be realistic about it. It's gonna be taking two to three years to show you guys that this actually fucking works. And in that two to three years, I accept that I'm not going to be taking, a, I'm going to pay myself, but I'm not taking a lot of money for me. It's going to be to make this thing grow because once it starts, once there's three, Elijah, I can go like this. I don't have to work any, at, at them anymore. You know what I'm saying? I can just help them grow and I'll be the guy setting up contacts on reserves. That's what I'd rather do. I don't want to be the guy working and, and doing all this stuff. That's not the plan. I want to begin that way, but I don't want it to end that way. I wanted to get to the point where I have consulting companies and managing companies that are doing all this stuff. So I can start on other businesses like the producing the electric vehicles on reserves throughout Canada by building our own 3D printed parts to build our own 3D, to build our own electric vehicles, all train motorcycles, vans, and so forth, even to eventually producing our own transport vehicles. So the logistics company I talked about would be using our First Nations made vehicles to do the transporting of the goods. And what Morris says, if we get that point where reserves are declared sovereign territory within Canada, that the jurisdictions and laws have to change. But now this becomes bigger and more important. We can do business however the fuck we want on our territories. Now we can work with other companies to get the best tech in the world on our reserves to bring the Saudis in, to bring the Chinese in, to bring whoever, the Germans, whoever has a good idea that's sustainable, good for the people kind of technology, we can bring it in and work with them. But if you're, if you're towing the party line, if you're talking about working with the multinationals, if you're a crown corporation or any shit like that, we just can refuse to work with you and you can't even pressure us because you have no fucking jurisdiction on our territories. That changes the business model a lot and the potential for growth in these kind of areas when we start looking at self-sufficiency. And that's the key, because it just has to be that. If, if it's not, 
then we're going to be playing their game and we'll always lose. It's just like going to the casino. The game is set up so the house always wins. When you play in the world banking system and you play their fucking game, the house always wins. They'll get you with fees. They'll get you with taxes or everything. But if I'm doing business and I, it says on paperwork, you need to have 75% native staff. Well, if I only have fucking four people working for me, three of them can fucking, you know, mop floors and fucking clean walls and desks and shit. And one of them can be running a machine done. There's my 75, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's it. The rest is automated, fully automated systems that currently exist. You know, all you're doing is buying their system off them. Then you're just doing your thing. Then it's your business model, what you grow, where do you get rid of, how do you sell, what do you give back to the people, blah, 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 right? It's unfortunate your friend left because I had a date with a guy tonight and I really left. I ran here. He actually drove me here at top speed so it wouldn't be late. And I actually would have rather, uh, you know, not had not. I don't know that I don't enjoy talking to you, but I thought this young man would, would uh, you know, yeah, I'm sorry. It's um, not your fault. It's not your fault at all. This is the uh, the Indian time thing. This is how a lot of uh, our businesses go belly up and things because you rely on certain people and they just don't care as much as you do and you can't do anything about that. It's not it doesn't make him a bad person or anything. It just means he's got other priorities and that's okay. You and I are talking and we're focusing on that and that's what I like. You know what I'm saying? And I know as well as I do the human factor. No, I I think. Something came up because Marvin, I, uh, he's a solid guy and he, he takes things seriously. Yeah, and, um, always does. I understand. Be flexible. So we'll just, we'll, we'll see what happened. <clears throat> but no, I, I, I mean, it's, it's great to, oh, shit. Um, oh, oh, <laughs> baby, what have you been feeding me lately? <laughs> my sweat smells like apple cider vinegar coming shooting out of a dead hippo's ass <laughs> i was just about to congratulate you on your uh furthering of the vision and getting clear about your goals and uh having such a like it it, it makes so much sense you kind of wonder why this hasn't happened before you know Think there is a reason because there's probably rules and regulations that i'll learn and i'm gonna find a way around it uh, i want you to think of my desire to get this done like in the art of war and if my opponent is going to come at me with this and this and this and this and i have prior knowledge of how he moves i can better prepare a defense appropriate to that individual if i know that they're going to have regulations and rules i have to know what most of them are and if they hit me with ones i'm not expecting i have to have backup plans plan b c d and e so that if that shit happens i'm not caught there going oh, oh, oh i guess i'll just quit oh, oh you know i want to be like okay well fine we'll do this then or we'll fill it we'll fucking do it this way then find a way you know find a fucking way if song geese ends up one of my partners as long as i don't give up 51 percent interest then I can be basically, as long as I keep it at a certain level, I can dictate the growth and the, by which it goes. I can turn it into a nonprofit, dude. You know what I'm saying? Like I can do all kinds of ways. If it's per, self-perpetuating, then I can turn it into a nonprofit. That just blew my own mind. Sorry, I got to write that down. Sorry, what did I just say? <laughs> self-perpetuating, but I think it is a nonprofit. If, thank you, baby. If it's self perpetuating, I can turn it into a non profit is in <laughs> profit. Because <laughs> I ain't no profit and I ain't here for profit. <coughs> Motherfucker. I'm just here to sit. Drink my buck shot and talk some shit. <laughs> Nonprofit. <laughs> Nonprofit. Yes, I. Nonprofit. I'm nothing special here, boy. Yeah, I'm just a bug singing in a breeze. Listening to the sound of poplar trees. That's a uh, shoot. It's eight o'clock. Um, well, 
I read you my poem, Elijah? Yeah. Elijah? <laughs> Elijah, can I uh, read you this poem I wrote? But... Please do. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fuck. No, wait a minute. I wrote her down. I wrote her down in a thing. And uh, I'm going to read it off my page because it's right there. But I wrote this in five minutes, dude. Okay. I recorded myself reading it. And then I uh, came home and wrote her down on the computer because I can't even read my own writing sometimes when I get excited about something. So. What do you know? What do you know of the smell of lightning after a storm? What do you know of the taste of a droplet of morning dew from the sunlit petals of a wild rose? Have you ever smelt the breeze coming from new spring poplar trees? What do you know of the sounds of whispering pines sharing ancient wisdoms in the wild winter winds? What do you know of the thousand points of rainbow light dancing off the hide of a water drum? What do you know of the feel of a newborn skin just new to this world? Do you remember the first time you ever saw fire? You wanted to touch it, to embrace it so badly. Maybe you were held back. And if you were not, you felt for yourself firsthand the medicine of fire. What do you know of the whispering winds? What do you know of the soul's eternal fire? What do you know of the heartbeat of the earth? What do you know of the singing waters? <laughs> Little pun there at the end. Couldn't help myself. It's lovely. It is lovely. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It all came out just one thing all at once. That's a beautiful stream. Hey, man, you and I usually have some pretty uh, trippy conversations, man. I mean, it's because I'm a good listener. And I talk too much. Yeah, you got a lot to say. And it's interesting. And uh, I actually don't like talking much, so it works out. Well, the sound of your voice is like sand on glass to me. So I'm also happy that you don't like talking. <laughs> I was I was waiting for the compliment, and then when the insult hit, I had a little bit of a problem. <laughs> a man will have to sit for a long time with his mouth wide open before roast duck flies in. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, yeah, so this so what I know and understand. What was the point of you introducing me to this young fellow? Was he, is he into some organic gardening or something? Is he in an initiative for food security? Like, what was the point? He, he actually w works for one of the largest f food distribution companies. So, like GFS or Island West or like Cisco or something. I think food maybe distribution. Are you talking like for the big warehouses, like Sun, I think maybe Cisco Sun and all that. Maybe Cisco, let me, uh, I like also he, work for them. I worked for Western Grocer in out of Edmonton for a while in the warehouse. Okay. I've had many jobs, Elijah. It's part of being a gypsy, bud. <laughs> Which, Does this look cool, bud? Does this look all right? You look slightly demented. Does this look cool, Biggs? Okay, I'm happy then. I'm ready to meet your friend. Pressing, uh. <laughs> Maybe. All I can get out of him is these little side giggles and giffles. It's just, it's, it's not worth it, babes. Um. Yeah, so he works in the food industry, and uh, I've known him for a number of years. And he's, I just get the, I don't know him that well, but I just get the impression he's quite solid and he's uh, always working and he's uh, got more of an entrepreneurial mind. And he could probably handle the Dacronian ruler of the universe being his boss or partner or whatever that may be. <laughs> ah. 
Ah, uh, really? It it kind of be nice to be the go between between like the Draconian Empire and the rest of Earth, and always know there's fifty battleships at your back just in case things go off a bit, and they treat you better, right? The Thoracic Empire is is fairly large in and of itself. As a Thoracic, you belong to a noble race with a long, proud military history. You know, but. Uh, until we have his genetic sequencing identified, I'm not prepared to expose any draconian secrets to him at this time. I get you. But like I was saying, it just I think people would, would pay attention to Captain Sweep a little bit more. Real bad, it's make me sick right now. I wish I washed my feet from walking on the street. Oh, this thing not so for you, my friend. Yeah, I can tell. Free, actually, I can actually smell. Hey, I can do that too. Check it out, bro. Look at this. I'm gonna do it too. Oh wait, this is pepper spray. I better not do that. <laughs> oh shit! You don't want to spray your mouth with pepper spray, right? It's like no. using pepper spray for hand sanitizer. It's a terrible idea. What is that? I can't read. It looks like space, dude. You're showing me space. Is the closer does it work? Put it near your face. There. Oh, it's some kind of Doc brand. Marie Doc brand. Dog dude. Prairie brand. Prairie doctor. <gasps> Snake oil. Yay! <laughs> Just for you. Did you buy it off Matt? No. Did Matt tell you what happened? No. We're yeah. not talking again. <laughs> oh, you and him aren't talking. No. What about happened? You guys have another ideological con con liberation. He uh, he sent me a message, and the message was, "Do I want my?" I think I was sending him a message on a possible show idea, and he sent me back a sort of a message saying. Do I want my work to come to the world or not kind of thing, like sort of insinuating my work might never get in the world. And in my opinion, my work is in the world. And yeah, <laughs> I know I took it's offense to it. of him. And so I, so I said, I sent him a message saying you made two mistakes. Yeah. And then he sent back a message saying, you're calling me mistakes. That's it. This is over. <laughs> so he didn't like my feedback about his feedback well i can only tell you that the conversation we've had earlier where i was being all elusive as to what thing i was talking about let us say we now know who i was talking about so he's been acting weird with me because he knows i uh called him on his shit and uh he's a little like nervous about it but then he just reached out to me yesterday and he's like he wants to hang out and saying that I helped him, I changed his life and all this stuff. And I'm like, you know, well, we'll see, but you know, back to right on and change fuck all. That's cool. And I think I changed my underwear today. <laughs> yeah, I did. Woo! Didn't change. Watch my feet though. Dirty socks. Bad. It's a little humiliating. I think my Doc Martens need a defumigation. You know, when you wear the mask, I couldn't hear anything you were saying, but you look good, eh? <laughs> it was, I, I probably the viewing audience might understand, but I sometimes can't hear things too well. Maybe I could get one of those mics that goes inside the mask yeah. or a head, headset when I wear the mask. Uh, and I'm going to spray paint it all black, by the way. And I have a solid Japanese mask. Because I thought this was good. The, the ad made this look solid. So I thought I was getting a solid thing, not a rubbery, fucking cheap thing. And then they, I ordered black. They gave me silver. And I can't send it back to Japan and say, get it right. So I'm just going to spray paint it black. But I'm going to take my hard plastic mask and put this one over. So since it's also a Japanese Oni mask, it's just this one's cooler. 
So I'll put that inside so it keeps a better form and then spray paint this and it's gonna be like, you know, pretty awesome Japanese demon lord. I was thinking that could be your uh, your symbolic representation, like like ninja greenhouses, right? Like uh... you got to get off that ketamine, bud. <laughs> <laughs> I love okay. roasting, man. I feel like nobody really does. So you're you're so used to doing it to everyone else that it's nice. Someone can do it to you sometimes. <laughs> Maybe everyone does it to me. No. Yeah. Seem like a pretty trickstery kind of character. I feel like he wouldn't put up with that for very long. Guess it depends on from who. <laughs> if it's a, if it's a younger lad, <laughs> it's a little bit different. Well, it's... you're not that much older than me, Elijah. What are you like? Nine years older than me? Fifty-seven. 10 years. Yeah, and I'm 47, so yeah, you're exactly 10 years. Which means you're a, uh, what year are you on the Chinese again? You're a- uh, Rabbit. Shit. Wapus. Wapus. You're the hair month of the potato? Hmm? What month? Month of the potato? <laughs> month of the, I think it's metal. No, no, you're European. Oh, November 25th. So that makes you... Sagittarius. In Western. Sag. So you're a Sag fucking rabbit. Rabbit in... Mm -hmm. Front legs of a horse, back legs of a rabbit, body of a man. That's pretty cool. Pretty intense, actually. Hey. Mm. It's a little salty. Thank you, lover. I just had a, this part of the hand of a hippie. Just she just gave it to me. Mm. Well, did you grow up in like a teasing environment where everyone was always insulting one another and uh, playing and? You have a lot of native friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's like pretty much part of the course, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, I pretty I noticed that yeah, like First Nations people had a much bigger sense of humor than whites. Whites are pretty I love white Irish Catholic, so it was a lot of that kind of strictness to things and serious about everything, but there's also humor. But then the native side of things, it's just it's a whole other fucking world in there. You know, it's like how you deal with trauma is you laugh about it. You find uh, something funny about it. It's just when you laugh. Whereas when everyone's laughing and it doesn't hurt as much. So we do that a lot. Yeah. We deal with heavy shit. I think that's one of those reasons why I like the concept of the sacred clown, right? Which you are and I am. You know, is that that sacred clown, the false face, the, the, shapeshifter that paradigm that ideal the sacred clown being able to come and you know say the right things in, in in those ceremonies and stuff to bring laughter by acting purposely acting silly not in a way of mockery or condescending or anything intentionally but more in a way of like uh, a, a type of mockery that's meant as a kind of a healing thing where you laugh at this thing that you're scared of like those that dad and the little girl in syria where every time they heard an airplane drop a bomb he taught his daughter to laugh instead of get scared about it and so she would be there's a video of him and her just laughing at the bombs and you can tell she's scared you can tell she's traumatized but by laughing it's getting through it and she's not you know what i'm saying it helps people deal with shit and, and we know that you know and i think a lot of people know that the jews knew that the blacks knew that that's part of their tradition too is humor you know got a little out of control man you <laughs> <laughs> we can make fun of you but you can't make fun of us <laughs> anyways i'm going to smoke which is why the things are over there and uh, you may be able to see me floating in the northern lights Look. Can you see that? Can you see me? Floating. I can see you. Yeah, it's pretty Floating cool. 
Okay. I'm going to turn the speaker so I can hear you better whilst, whilst I'm out here smoking. Turn the speaker my or the microphone. Yeah, there you go, bud. There's my uh, what I've got going on in life. Are there any sort of uh, are you encountering any obstacles at all in any way? Like, I know I will when we start getting to the math and numbers and accounting and, and cost projections and blah blah blah. That's when my problems will start because I have a serious, long, deep rooted math phobia and it's got to be dealt with sooner or later. I feel like it might be a thing that I'm I can't let it be an obstacle. So. Well, in Excel spreadsheets basically do most of the calculations if but you just got to learn excel i guess what's it like i don't even know how to use that kind of stuff i'm not so good at following some like computer-based program to teach me how to use it either I'd rather have someone there to kind of like show me what browsers to open or this that and the other thing you know that's how i learn right so if somebody you know that i know <clears throat> that lives in vancouver at a friend's place were to come out here <laughs> hang out for a bit, I could probably get him to show me some of that stuff and I could probably trade him, you know. <laughs> Big bag of weed. Something, you know, something to make it worth it. Well, but I just, I don't know anyone like that. That's the problem. <coughs> Fuck, I just can't think of anyone off the top. You know anyone like that? I'll, I'll look into it. Okay. How is that proceeding anyway? What's that? How is that plan proceeding anyway? Well, you've at least thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah big there. Boom. Done. Progress. It's, uh, like, I, I, I guess there's just a couple of projects which I'm, Every time I've gone on the road, I fucked up my whatever I had online for the like every year, every year I make the same, let's say, mistakes. Right. And because of that, I'm sort of my 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 progress is has been in this cycle. And so it's it's like for me to to get my own work where it needs to go. And that's like I've spent so much time on other people. And you know, I, I have to get my own work going in order to be even helpful to other people. And when, when I'm, when my stuff is going, I, I have got a lot more leverage uh, to help um, because I find like, let's say I came over there. Mm -hmm. I generally dive into the project that's on hand and the person who's on hand. So whoever I'm around gets my attention, right. To do what I can do. That's how I live my life in a sense. And so now I'm in a position where I got stability and I have like the person I'm hanging with doesn't really have interest in either me helping or in my work. So it's, there's a neutrality so I can actually just sit down and do my own work, which doesn't usually happen because usually I'm around somebody and part of my focus is always on who is around me in terms of the, just life, the exchange, the the world, the way I live kind of thing, right? And so what this COVID thing has done is it's isolated me in such a manner that I, I am not seeing nobody, but I'm actually getting stuff done that I've never done before on my own, so. And I kind of like, I would encourage you to continue that. Right? It's just, you got to focus on that, right? And so you finally have the situation, I would say, like maybe, use your past experience as a guide to kind of like, maybe I shouldn't, maybe I should just resist the urge to, the, the song comes to my head, right? It goes up. Farewell to the tent and the old caravan, to the tinker, the gypsy, the traveler man, farewell to the life of the road. You know, it's, it's just kind of like, you, you got the situation, maybe it's there for a reason and you're supposed to maximize it and then when you don't need it anymore, when it's obvious it's time to go, you move on. You know, you, that's when you, you, you can. Yeah. Or if 
you got a good situation and you're getting shit done, I, I would say just fucking keep it, bro, because that's hard to find. So hard to find. Well, and and that's 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 the situation. And so, like, I can I'm doing this. Like, this is. But not even a temporary visit is not even possible. Well, again, because it's almost like once I break the spell or once I leave. I don't really want to be living this lifestyle. Like I like the other lifestyle. Oh, the life of the rover, right? Gypsy. Yeah. Hitting the road. I know what you mean. I'm, but I'm but to do the roving, sense. I need I need the resources to sort of back me up. Otherwise, I'm roving yeah, kind of. Thinking intensely about the reality of what I'm getting myself into, as in what it means for time commitment. And in the beginning, when I'm learning how to run the systems myself. It's going to be me in the fucking greenhouse doing a lot of that chopping and packaging and all the shit the machines don't do. I'm going to have to be in there full time doing it on my own, teaching myself how to do it so that I know how to teach someone else how to do it. Then I can step back. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. In the beginning, the commitment of time and energy, I'm looking at this program's done in July. So any time between now and July is literally all I have for self for the next two to three years or more is going to be intensely devoted to getting all my business projects up and flying where a, like i told you a leads to b a and b leads to c a b and c leads to d I'm not just stopping at greenhouses dude I'm, I'm gonna explode here i said once you teach me how to write business grants and proposal grants and shit i'm fucking gone i'm gonna be registering arcanium enterprises and registering mother's hands registering trinity systems i've already got two different engineers and i'm going to be zooming with about fucking giving me a digital representation of the things i'm talking about one of them is my ex's fucking current boyfriend is in computer and electrical engineering i met some guy one day talking to him about trinity you know, basically the without giving too much away he's in his last year and he's just finished his mechanical engineering and we're supposed to have a zoom call and it's about to start going the process and what he you know if he's willing to work with me or does he want a consultation fee blah 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 and looking at non-disclosure agreements and all that kind of shit, shit right so working with people that i just i met some kiddies in his last year of horticulture you know just randomly just we have another talk and we spent the day together amazing connection end of the day i'm like so what do you do like are you working or stuff he's oh i'm in school you know where at you vet oh, what are you taking horticulture after we had this amazing day of a powerful connection, and of course the kid took it in a different direction and it, it never really panned out, you know, dude, that's how it fucking goes, right? It's gonna be but I just thought how serendipitous that this kid is in here, horticulture, and here I'm talking engineers and shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's a reason this is all happening, and I feel like this is my fucking time, man. So let's just get the greenhouse going and up and running lower eggs towards that so i give myself nine months have something you know fucking spades in the ground whatever it is all that lined up and you know i'm gonna have the company i'm gonna already contract with figured out i'm gonna have my business plan done i'm gonna have all my grant proposals done all that's gonna actually be done and that's what this program teaches you to do it it basically does it all for you without doing it all for you it teaches mm. you how to do it all yourself and they want you to succeed they want you to get a business started there's people in my class who just, their vision is a food truck. They're going to get the money for the food truck. They're going to have a business if they stick to it. That's literally the kind of program this is. It's just my vision is bigger than everyone else's. I'm a mountain climber. Most of them are craftsmen or mom and pops. I'm a mountain climber. I got visions of shit. And now it's time to get it out of my head and into reality. But think about it realistically, but don't lose your altruism. You know what I mean? The overall goal isn't for me to become a billionaire and a fat cat. The overall goal isn't to fucking guarantee my daughter's life's going to be fine and fuck everyone else's kids. You know what I'm saying? That's not the fucking vision for me. I couldn't live with myself. But I'm not an employee. I'm a king. And I have to start acting like a your magic, your agency, your, your kind of thing to pull in and make the most of opportunities. People like you are helping with that. And, and that's just, you know, I appreciate you, man, so much. I don't like you, but I, 
fucking appreciate you. <laughs> well, it's always good to have someone to bounce the ideas off who understands the contacts and understands your situation and can listen to the deeper emotional stuff that usually nobody has someone to talk to about unless they got like uh well i mean everyone's got somebody right and then you know i got my support networks for that shit but i think you represent something a little different to me you kind of you kind of help me believe in some of the visions and ideas that i have that maybe i'm not so Maybe I'm not so crazy. Maybe there is some validity of some of my ideas, and you kind of help me see. I mean, I witness a change, man. I mean, I I've seen you for a number of years, and and the amount of like, I see the the sort of uh, molding into the entrepreneur that you are in a sense, and sort of stepping into that, stepping into your real power around what you're able to do. And that's, that's, you know, wonderful to see, see you so inspired and, and your vision is so strong. It's good for the people. I, I mean, I've just got 110% sort of confidence that you're going to do this and that you're going to, your life is going to change utterly because you're going to, I think you're just going to love doing this. Every aspect, you're going to bring in everything you've learned. And most of what you learned, I think, is your ability to communicate with people. I talked to my best friend the other day and uh, kind of uh... Well, we don't talk all that often, but in the process of our talk, first you start with the humor and the joking and the checking in with each other. But then we kind of start getting to the meat and potatoes and stuff. And I'll, I'll, if I have stuff to say that I've been holding on to, I finally get a chance, I'll, I'll let it out. Well, with him, I had some stuff I wanted to say. I've been thinking in the back of my head. Him and I have some major ideological differences. He is, without a doubt, the single most intelligent being I've ever met in my life. This man is a fucking genius on levels that make me look like a bloody novice. And I'm not kidding. This guy is hyper. And he, he walks his talk. It's in the it's in, it's in, proofs in the pudding. The guy knows how to play the game well. But we have ideological differences about things when it comes to certain stuff. And in the process of that, this guy has heard me for years. When I had this greenhouse idea was when I was in my 20s, Elijah. I was sitting around in Tofino talking to him about this kind of, well, wouldn't it be awesome if we could this and that? And he was always one of those guys who he would listen, but then he would just, he couldn't help himself. He'd have to like point out the glaring contradictions or the flaws, the logical fallacies and things. He'd, he'd be that guy to point that shit out to, regardless of how passionate you were about it. You could trust Kevin will be the realist. You know what I mean? And, uh, so I told him as we were talking, it's kind of like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this stuff, Kevin, and it's just, you know, I, I feel like you don't really believe in me, you know, it's like you're always kind of like pissing on my parade kind of thing, you're always being that guy, and sometimes I don't need that from you, I need you to actually tell me to support me and believe in me, and she was like, James, I always believe, and I've supported you from day one, tell me when I never did, and of course I couldn't. But he said, I've always known you were destined for great things. I've always, this is two days ago, I've always known you were meant for something bigger. I just didn't always tell you because I'm not that guy to pump sunshine up here. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm like, thanks, bro. It meant a lot. It almost like teared me up. But that's that's some genuine shit right there. You know what I mean? I always thought he thought I was a dreamer and just like didn't believe in any of my things. But he was always that guy who would, Listen to me and then be okay. Well, write a business plan then. Like, write a business plan. I don't know. So go, learn online. Go to the library. Get a book on business plans. Stop telling me your fucking ideas. And start doing something about it. And I never did. Fucking smoking weed, drinking, doing M, doing this, doing that, fucking this, and doing that. I never really did. I just had the ideas. And they never went anywhere. They stayed in my head. But now I'm actually learning how to sort them all out and starting to approach them from a kind of a rational perspective of believing that it's possible for these things to come to reality without getting overwhelmed by doing it all at once. You know, just that old Ed, Edmonton Eskimo's ideology of 10 yards at a time, just 10 yards at a time, one thing at a fucking time, get one greenhouse, get greenhouse effect in effect, and he can step away and go on another project. Do you know what I mean? And then again, with, with mother's hands, constant innovation 
You have to constantly be innovating in whatever field you're in, or you're going to end up falling on your, sitting on your heels and you'll fall behind. And the other companies will, you know what I'm saying? But if you got the ways and means, stay ahead of your field. Be the one to invest in the latest technology in your field. Go to those trade shows in China and Japan and places where they have these big agriculture things and these robotic events. Let's me and you go to some of these. Let's see some shit. You know what I'm saying? Let's see if we can make some stuff happen there. Be fun. I'd love to go. I see him on the internet and I watch him. I would give anything to go to one of these big Chinese tech fucking conventions. Fuck, are they cool? You know, like football fields and football fields, huge buildings full of robots of this kind and that kind of cutting edge shit from entertainment to manufacturing all over the place. You know, free samples of this, that, and the other thing, swag up the yin yang, like just to go. You know? Yeah, no, that would be very cool. I've been following robot robotics my entire life since I was a little boy, and I've never stopped. And I'm pretty fucking well versed on on what's all out there. There's always new shit, right? I've been on the following automated greenhouses now for fucking decades, decades, Elijah. <coughs> so I kind of have some knowledge in the field, but definitely would benefit from going to a visit to one of the companies that I might work with to go to where their facilities are and tour their fucking plants and see what they're doing. Get some numbers and ideas of what they're looking for to set me up in Songji's reserve. What would it take? Fully automated system and an expert. Give me a ballpark. So couldn't could you, like, in your business plan, depending on, I mean, it sounds like you want to hit the dirt within nine months or something. Yeah. Um, did you... And when would you get the money? See that, I, I'm not going to bullshit you. I don't know. I don't even know how long it would take or anything. I just know that if I'm accepted, that usually doesn't take very long. If they accept your grant proposal, it's all pretty fast. Right? I'm just wondering if this summer. Um, I, I guess. Really, yes, exactly. But it's probably online. Eh? I guess everything's got COVID's t turned everything online, which is a bit of a drag. It's just another Zoom. Well, we have to do mentorships, right? <clears throat> As part of the program, which means I have to have someone in the field I'm in work with me to teach me. So I'd be going to say Eurosia Greenhouse and I'd be mentoring with the CEO there. And he'd show me the facilities and da 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 da, blah, 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 to help me get my money. They pay the mentors to do this. That's part of the program. Oh, okay. So if I find a mentor that's in the field I'm in, like that's a good network right there, especially if they see what I'm trying to do. I can't see, even even talking to you, I can't see that if I took the same pitch I gave you to a company that does vertical farming, farming technology, told them this was my idea, that they wouldn't give me a lowered cost for the system. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that altruism could have come out in other ways too. We believe in what you're trying to do. We're already fucking finally going to give you the same system as it is at this much instead of this much. That could well, be I, I, I would suggest that if you had a larger plan of 100 greenhouses over the next, let's say, five years across Canada, and this is the first one, but you're aiming at doing one on every review. the main supplier of the technology over the next five to 10 years, they yeah. might go for it then. Yeah. yeah, I'm just saying, like within, you can, I think appeal to altruism, but you should probably always appeal to sort of quantity and volume and right. and the That's preferred like, supplier. Power, right? You, you trust in people's generosity, but you know what I mean? Like you fucking, how's that go? It's in business. Go. Trust people's self-interest, not their generosity. Yeah, that's in the power book. Yeah, forty laws of power. Yeah. If you make it worth their while, people are more willing to help you than if you do it, just ask them to do something nice for you. Do and I think that, you know? exactly, and I think because what I'm hearing from you is, you know, within the plan, you want to get this up, and let's say it's going to take three years to get going, let's just say, from what I heard. Yeah. But let's say if you had a, a more accelerate, like if you actually had the financing to set 10 up, let's just say. Yeah. 
and you recruit the first one to do it, and then you're already financed to sort of, for you, it could just be KK, now that company just set this up, go set it up over there kind of thing. That type of thinking is like McDonald's franchise, I'm going big from the get-go, which is quite but different that's from- not how McDonald's started. Okay, but just let me finish for a sec. Within your mind and within your paperwork, there's different tracks, right? One says, okay, in three, then we'll wait and see, then we'll build as you, like you had, you did have a mathematical sort of equation, right? For how, once you got two, once you got three, once you got four, whatever it may be. That's very, you know, I don't know if on your paperwork, you have in five years, we're gonna do a hundred or 20 or, or a much larger number. I hadn't actually. Right. I so hadn't considered of what the effect would be, say, in 10 years with 10 years, nine greenhouses, eight greenhouses in 10 years. That's a right. Lot. But I'm, ju I'm just saying if you, even if you put, fit, like, let's just say there was going to be this world catastrophe and every reserve should have food security within five years. I hear what you're saying. My my issue is this, and you're going to agree with me on this. I have a far easier time getting 2.5 million startup than I would 25.5 million startup or 250.5 million dollar startup. I've actually heard that it's easy. It's easier to get 20 or 30 million than it is to get two or three. And if they have nine billion dollars. They're looking for people like you who actually they can spend big money on because they're doing like 500 grand here too. Like whatever is the pre you said you're doing mom and pop. And again, I'm, I'm one of those people have a problem solving. So one of the things I would see there is suppose I do do that and they do build 10 right off the hop. Those experts that are part of the package are only in each greenhouse for a sh very short period of time before they leave to their their whatever they're doing. If I haven't got the right people in place in that period of time, right off the hop, that are dedicated to learning the system, running the show, blah, 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 it will just simply not work because it's too big of a commitment right out of the gate. I got you, but let's say you do two years. Let's No, no but I'm just saying, just listen for a sec. If let's say the first three years, you get the first one going mm. and then you get 20 going in the next two years, five years. So it's all like your R and D and everything's up front in the first three, you figure out how to do it. And then you have a real quick boom, 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 boom. So each greenhouse is going to have type of systems in place, people maintaining those systems, all that stuff. That would mean me having to hire right out the door hundreds of people, train them, get them all on board with the ideology, all that kind of stuff, so that by the time this thing can happen, it clicks in, boom, 10 greenhouses right off the hop. I can't work 10 greenhouses by myself, nor could I by myself go and check on each 10 of the greenhouses and make sure they're all following. I didn't, I didn't say from the get-go, I said after the first three years. You, you, you figure out everything yeah, in the first right. yeah, three years, okay. like okay. like you said, yeah. but within your initial plan, you have a much higher gradation of number of greenhouses because they've got, like, again, you prove it once, if they've got $9 billion, they could do them all. Yeah. Like, like, I mean, if you, at the same time, I might want to address the water systems on the reserves mm -hmm. because that's even a bigger problem, right? I mean, if you address that at the same time and go, because because everyone in my, like whatever I see in memes and stuff, the biggest problem, let's say on Canada, is the water systems in the reserves. Like that should be fixed. That like, that should be done tomorrow. Mm -hmm. yep. And that's, uh, that would require a massive, because you have to also think of the infrastructure involved the amount of construction it would require a, a large scale thing on multiple reserves multiple remote locations and multiple costs that are going to go up to the roof that's why things are so expensive because transport is a cunt up there and so you got a tiny little window which all the other shit has to come and go up and down to get them to where they are 
if you throw construction on the highway too, to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It becomes this thing, and that's when cost overrides start going out of the fucking thing, and it gets out of control. But I have always, and I'm not contradicting you because I hear what you're saying, and you're right. But I have this idea in my head of slow and steady growth. That you you rely on what you know you can do, not what you would want to do or think you can. Do what you know you can do. And I know I can do one greenhouse every two years, max. Hopefully, I could do one greenhouse every year under the current model. And if every single year another reserve gets its food problem solved, that if I play my cards right, and remember, I have to bring people to each reserve from the last reserve. To teach this reserve the new technology and the new stuff. And then I have to bring those people to the next reserve and leave some people behind that I know they know what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Fucking self sufficiency, not bringing outside experts to tell all the natives what to do on their land. No, it has to be people who are dedicated to learning these systems. And that takes time before you're able to trust them. The, with the model and everything else and then you move to the next but you're right we could do bigger we could do say four at a time every year we do four you know that kind of growth is possible we could get bigger loans or bigger grants you're right but i'm worried about you know that that shakespearean saying they stumble those who run too fast you know well, just it, it, it just sounds like it's more like the training involved because it's such a turnkey automated process the training you know obviously you're going to need a training crew but it's not like it's not like manufacturing plant or other things where there's specific you know high-end skills that have to be trained mm -hmm. so well what about the maintenance like robots break down right systems break down there's malfunctions there's fuckery in the water supply there's fuckery in the electrical there's fuckery in the machinery itself some plants aren't getting nutriated enough there's always something and if some some yahoo who's just getting paid to do something doesn't know what they're doing you could fuck up the yield of hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of, of produce <coughs> because buddy didn't give a fuck enough to show up to work that day or press a button he should have pressed or something you know what i mean like there is a little certain level of expertise that would only come through training with a consultant from that company for six to nine months once just like okay go back in history remember how china got started they were working with the russians the communists in russia and the russian communists were bringing experts into china to teach them about russian communism and how it could work in china but when the chinese saw that the russians were influencing them too much they sent those Russian experts back and they had their own people had learned enough at that point that they could take over the communist process in China. So this is the same thing. We can't move to another one until the right people are in their places because we're dealing with big money here. If someone's a con artist or a fuckery, you change the numbers on the computer and suddenly all the money's going to your bank account instead of where it's supposed to go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A honey. Well, yeah, that's part. So that's like I'm trying to be rational. I'm trying to be, and I do, you're right. I have to do think about because I didn't think about what would be you know, ten years from now. There could be a hundred of them. For fuck's sake, you know what I mean? Like if I really, this holy fuck, it can grow pretty fast. I just, I don't know. I mean, I'm just playing a bit of devil's advocate, but also having a sense that there's going to be a need for self-sufficiency in food everywhere at some point and way quicker than we way quicker than we know and that type of emergency type thinking helps to get humans going like if if, if noah knows the floods come and he's going to build the ark kind of thing and i think if you bring this into your overall message that 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 is it's kind of like your you know, kind of like as politician, food sufficiency for the reserves. And this is how we're going to do it. And you could get, you know, massive buy-in, you know, for food. My class who wants to do a large-scale oyster and clam farm. Um, the the uh, equipment's already on the Songhees Reserve. All everything's there. It's just this company went out of business. So she wants to start it up and make it First Nations owned and everything else. 
working with someone like that means I can now start supplying seafood in my food chain. If I can work with companies like your friend, I was hoping to talk to you, because he could, for instance, spearhead the hydroponics or the aeropon or the 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 the, the, the what was it called? Aquaponics, where we can focus on things like shrimp and trout and plants in the same environment, the same cycle of, of, of uh, aquaponics, that if he were to spearhead that up, then the potential of supplying more seafood to the food chain that's healthy and good and, and helps the plants and the plants help the animals, we get prawns and shit, that's also offered in the grocery stores under reduced cost. If we can get people, First Nations people working with farming, with ranching of, of animals and things in different ways, we can start lowering the cost of, of meat. You know, we're working with existing farms that want to work with First Nations people and be our allies. There's a lot of them out there. If it's not, if we don't have to start it, we just have to work with the right people. It creates an opportunity where people would rather do business with our food, our model, knowing what it's doing. Then the big chains they've been doing it with, competing with all these other companies and sell out farmers who use Montesano products and shit. You have to compete with them when you're selling your sheep or your pigs or your anything. So if they were supplying to someone like us who's doing this thing for a different way and they prefer doing business with us, then awesome. There's a new partner. You know what I mean? But the more we can add to the food chain, because I'm not just talking about one greenhouse just offering romaine lettuce and spinach. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. Like, I'm thinking of what, how many, you know, I told you this last time. They say that whoever can solve the riddle of rice, wheat, and soybeans when it comes to the vertical farming is going to be the world leading innovator in food security. And I, Elijah, already have some fucking ideas already. Since I heard that, my brain's been nonstop thinking about these kind of things. And I have an idea. I just saved a video today. And it was called Tetris. It was called Mega Factory Vertical Farming. And it was just a 3D model some guy made on the computer of this basically like a Tesla style gigafax full of you know five or six racks high of farming automated farming all working on system. But imagine if that big mother motherfucker was growing wheat, just wheat. The one over there in the next province was putting out rice. And the next gigafactory in the next province was putting out soybean. And the next one was putting out you know what I'm seeing? The kind of levels where you're you're competing with the prairies and you're in one fucking building. You know, one building, 100 acres of one building stacked five levels high is now 500 acres worth of produce you're putting out. It's, see what I'm saying? Like, holy fuck. And if you can solve the wheat, the soybean and the rice, rice just needs water. That it's just better. fucking there's so many ways you can do it like i think i gotta get going um but good to see you good to hear you and i'm um, i'll find out what happened with marvin and hopefully we can uh maybe aim at the next a week from now seems like it's a cycle thing sorry it's all right going on my rant sorry i mean i know i do that to you every single time i feel bad Hmm. No, it's okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, you take care. Let me know what's going on. Okay. Doke.